Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. I don't know what I just did there. It's been a strange day. I can feel the negative thoughts just creep in. Um, it's been a, a, a few productive couple of days, couple of weeks, so I'm not terribly destroyed. But before I get into any of that, I would like to say that Welcome to another girl chat video. I like doing these videos because they're kind of free and whatever and the reason why I do them is because when I was closeted and I had no freedom and we're going to get into that in a little bit but when I was closeted and I had no you know essentially no friends and no communication YouTube videos were what kept me company and what kept me you know feel made me feel like I wasn't alone in some degree to some extent even though <laughs> on a cosmic level we are all alone um sorry that was negative and depressing and that didn't need to happen in terms of the topics that were suggested for this girl chat i have body positivity which i have a video there is a video i have video for you uh i don't know if i'll link it down below but i have done body positivity before and the specific person who asked for this subject to be talked about i have linked you to that video so enjoy uh, and the other uh, topic that was suggested is to talk about freedom and how it feels to be free or the first few times that I felt free. We'll talk about a couple of firsts in this video. I think I've kind of addressed different firsts in different videos, but I don't think that I've specifically addressed all of them, um, you know, in one video where we just talk about freedom, which would be a nice thing to talk about. Uh, and the final thing is that some people suggested that I should start playing video games on my YouTube channel and honestly let's do that one first because I feel like that one's the easiest to get out of the way what is the future of this YouTube channel uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it more in my next video which is going to be my year in review I do a year in review and I want to I want to do a year in review every single year that I'm using YouTube because it's a good way for me to set targets for myself and then you know call myself out on what targets I have achieved and what I haven't achieved um, but I would really, really like to play video video games on my channel. I would love to. I think that it's a really interesting way of engaging people. It's fun for me. And it's, I, I've always enjoyed watching people play video games. Even as a kid, I used to watch my uncles play video games. And, um, you know, in my semi-adulthood and my adolescence, I watched YouTubers play video games and I, I genuinely enjoyed it. I love video game culture, I love the storytelling in video games, I would love to write the story for a video game, um, but you know, that's those are big things and I don't want to talk about that, but that is something that I would love to do. I just don't have the means for it right now. But yeah, I, I want to spice up the content a little bit. I want to open it up so that, you know, go a bit more into the mainstream because I enjoy the mainstream content and I want to make mainstream content. Um, obviously, I'm not going to give up on making like the content that I do now because I think it's really important, but I don't see why we can't consolidate mainstream content with the content that I currently make. I think that it's it's doable and I would like to do it. Um, so with that out of the way, I think uh, he suggested like a bunch of video games for me to play and while I, I don't think I'd ever play Call of Duty because it's not my kind of game, um, I think I have enough personality and enough anger, <laughs> honestly, and enough competitiveness to play a video game and make it enjoyable. So that's something that I would like to experiment with. Um, but with the other two subjects on, let's talk about body positivity for a second because I've been struggling so it's something that I've been bringing up but not really talking about and I really don't want to cry in this video because it's just not the day okay I'm tired I had an interview yesterday I got called back today telling me that I didn't have enough experience as a young person to be making 30,000 a year and um, there were just people who were way more qualified for me than me because I asked for feedback as well and there were just people who were way more qualified than me to work in a job like that so I mean I'm over it but I'm, I'm feeling very defeated uh, I would really like people to stroke my ego today because I'm feeling very defeated kind of depressed because it's in three months of me like applying for jobs going to interviews applying for jobs going to interviews applying for jobs going to interviews and every single time I get a, a rejection notice or someone calls me about a rejection and I know it's not their fault they have to do it and I actually really appreciate the fact that people will come back to me and like give me closure because it's the better alternative to never hearing back from them every time I hear a rejection it just eats at me that little bit more <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna give up I'm gonna keep applying and I'm gonna keep trying to get a stable job and be an adult but it's just really difficult um, and I hope nobody takes this in the wrong way like oh my god she's complaining about getting a, a job in a first world country like 
that's not what I'm doing. I'm just expressing how I'm feeling. Like, that's all I'm doing. But getting back to the subject. So something that I've brought up uh, quite a few times in the last three months <laughs> is the fact that I may have an eating disorder. I still don't know if I do. Uh, and I don't want to go way into depth with it because I feel like first of all that's a whole video like I could sit here for 30 minutes talking about that and I really don't want to do that today but body positivity has had like maybe one fourth of the reason why I've been going through that um being poor <laughs> being broke typically means that I can't stick to the diet that I was originally sticking to so I was doing a keto diet from January and it was going really good I'm really good at being disciplined about what I eat but when I'm not making consistent money and um I'm not really you know I don't I, I gym was like the first thing that I cut as soon as you know I stopped making consistent money and it wasn't I have so many grievances about work right now like i i've been scared to write a complaint because the person that i send the complaint to is actually someone i have a complaint against um and, and there are several people that i have complaints against and there are several incidents that i cite for complaints against like there was an incident where uh, my company refused to pay me uh, for half a day of work which uh, admittedly is not a lot of money but it's still hours that i worked and the reason that they gave me for not paying me that day was that they said that it was basically an interview because i was only there for a few hours which is ridiculous because i was not told it was an interview i was told it was half a day of work and i was constantly like i don't get into it but i was constantly told that i would be paid for that day or half that day or whatever um and then there were several other issues uh of late payments of being sent to the wrong place for work and then not being reimbursed like i must have on travel i must have spent about 15 to 18 pounds um because they'd sent me to the wrong location and then sent me to a different location and then i just and then the company that you know i was contracted to work for had cancelled because of all the different delays which is understandable but i wasn't paid for that day the entire day that i wasted i think it was a friday i was so stressed that i was like crying on tfl it was ridiculous but the stress and the fucking hell i don't want to cry in this video like i really don't want to cry in this video <laughs> um but the stress and the like the not going to the gym not being able to manage my diet not having any control over my life all of that has been adding up and that creates an eating disorder for me and again i'm not sure if it's an eating disorder i still need to get it confirmed but it's been a case of me like either feeling like i can't eat like i can't eat all day i don't want to cry please don't cry this is a girl chat it's meant to be light-hearted we're not meant to be making people sad um so it's been a case of like feeling as though i don't want to eat all day like i'll go through days of just not eating and just drinking water and feeling as though i don't want to eat or you know just not feeling hungry and just not feeling like eating and eating is a waste of money because i don't feel hungry or it's a case of eating and then not being able to keep it down like no matter how small the amount is and, and <sighs> vomiting is a big trigger for me because my mother had um for those of you who don't know she had stomach cancer and she later died from it and she she threw up her meals for a whole year because she couldn't keep it down it wasn't a case of her like instigating it oh my god this is a really heavy topic i'm realizing that um it wasn't a case of her like forcing food out of her system it was just a case of her body throwing up because it literally couldn't keep it down um so it's a big like thing like i i i have not vomited in i don't think since like 2015 when i was in my dad's house like i haven't vomited and i've been like vomiting quite consistent so it's worrying and I've, I've i've seen my gp about it they've sent a referral through i need to chase them up about it because it's been ridiculous okay but th i'm i'm getting stuff done about it and in the last week in the last two weeks it's been a bit better i've been able to keep food down like last night i was at a christmas party we had food and now i'm broke um so yeah uh, things things have been looking up because i've had work and I, I i definitely think that those two things are correlated and as soon as i figure out my employment situation and i get stable work things will slowly work themselves out like i don't necessarily need to have something i do need to have something fulfilling but i don't need to have something that pays me like 50 grand a year i just need money coming in I need, you know, stability, I need consistency, and that's it. And I, I know I've said in other videos that I enjoy chaos, and I generally do, um, but there's too many things that are unstable and too many things that are chaotic. I just need maybe like five things in my life that are stable. Uh, my employment, my best friend, and 
this is pretty much it like if I have those two things down most of the things in my life I can work out um so yeah and I'm hoping but in terms of body positivity because of that's what I was talking about because of um the fact that I've not been eating well and I've not been going to the gym uh things have been kind of going downhill for me <laughs> in terms of my body and I've been looking at myself and I've I'm constantly thinking like man I need to figure this out but I don't know how to figure it out and a lot of people helpfully they want to be helpful are saying like oh you can go to the park oh you can you know you can do different things to you know sort your body out but the thing is I have no energy because I'm not eating properly um I need the consistency of going to a place every day like I don't necessarily need people to go with but I also need to be comfortable where I go to work out that's just something that I need um and the gym that I was going to was somewhere I was comfortable going like I was going swimming every week I was um you know I was doing my cardio getting my cardio in I was starting to tra training um you know my diet was meticulous it was it was a lot of protein it was um some fats very few carbs uh i don't like cal calorie counting because numbers drive me insane i can't look at numbers for a, an extended amount of time because they literally drive me crazy but everything was you know in order i had set meals i had a weekly plan of what i was eating everything was fine and then my work fucked me up and everything's just been hanky panky since um i think there's two different camps in the body positivity camp one is that it doesn't matter how fucking huge you get it's fine <laughs> and i don't agree with that and the other one is that bodies need better representation and we can't just be looking at stick thin models all the time because it will drive us crazy it's one of the reasons why i can't really use instagram like i only really use instagram to post things and not to actually use the platform and like liking and browsing the few times that i have used instagram it's usually in company and it's usually looking at memes because that is the content that i consume um and i love memes and i wish that people would make more memes i still really 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 want a meme compilation made of my ali dawa video of the video that i'm talking to ali dawa is up on his channel it's called slaves dressed to impress please go and look it up and please make memes out of it because i want memes <laughs> to look at uh and i can't be bothered to make it myself um not only that i feel like it's it's more dead if i make the meme like you guys bring the content and i will showcase it like that's the deal i'll do a meme review but i really want <laughs> it's my dream that i really want somebody to make two videos so the video where he's arguing with zara in speaker's corner and the video where he's having a conversation with me in speaker's corner like those two videos i need to be made like chef kiss memes out of like i need that i need that in my life uh as someone who is declining into madness i need that in my life but getting back to the topic and trying to stay on point while my brain fog takes over one of the reasons i can't use instagram is that everything is so heavily edited and um so many of the models have unrealistic like they're literally unrealistic bodies uh it 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 makes me feel terrible about myself one of the subreddits that i follow like i don't use reddit frequently i definitely don't post on reddit it's just i don't know how to use a platform um kind of a boomer uh but one of the subreddits that i do follow is called instagram reality which and i i take sadistic pleasure in people's downfall uh like when i was in when i had broken so my first breakup was last year in january or february and my most recent breakup was this year in august and both times after i had broken up i just watched endless amounts of divorce court because it's just the funniest dumb like shit and just seeing other people suffering makes me feel better i'm sorry if that makes me a terrible person but seeing other people break out of their relationships helps me so in the same way like the, i don't follow instagram but I'll, I'll read this subreddit where people will post someone's really heavily edited video uh, video or instagram post and they'll like show a realistic picture of them taken on the same day or in the same week and they'll say like look how fake this is and that makes me feel better because we have normal bodies most of us do like i have a huge like i know you can't see it and i'm not going to show you it but i have a huge fucking stomach like most of the time i go out i feel really self-conscious about my stomach and i've tried to feel so much better about it over summer by wearing tiny little tops and shorts because that's what i felt comfortable with and i was trying to soak in vitamin d as much as possible it didn't work because i'm brown and i live in the uk but it's something that i'm really self-conscious about like other parts of my body i'm not as self-conscious about like my top like so my boobs my arms my legs um, even my butt i'm not really self-conscious about even though they're not like 
I'm no Kim Kardashian over here. In attitude, completely. But in body type, not at all. <laughs> but something that I'm really self-conscious about is my stomach. Because I've always had an Indian wheat belly. Uh, like, I, I have all my carbs just live here. They, anytime I eat a carb, it just goes straight to my belly and it stays there. And like, I've gained weight in other parts of my body that I don't feel bad about. Like, I've gained weight in my arms, like, I have bingo wings going here, but I don't really feel self conscious about it. I've gained weight in my thighs, and you know, I've I don't have a ton of cellulite because I don't gain weight in my thighs a lot, but I've gained, I've put on some, you know, some meat on my thighs because my thighs are really strong. Um, that I would argue that they are the strongest part of my body, except for my mind, because I am big brain. Um, but yeah, I, I gained some weight in my thighs and it hasn't done much. Like, I, I haven't, like, it's not the worst thing in the world for me. Like, it doesn't just trigger my brain. But anytime I feel like, so after yesterday dinner, Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner. You eat a, a ton of food, okay? And I didn't. I had lean meat for Christmas dinner, okay? And some potatoes, because why not? Um, that's what I had for Christmas dinner. And the moment I got home, I'm just like staring at my belly. And I, I had like two glasses of Prosecco or something like that. And for most of the night, I, I didn't even pay for my dinner. I have really great co-workers, uh, they're really good friends with me. Um, they bought me all my drinks. I just paid for my dinner. And I came home and I was just like staring at my belly like, did I put on weight from Christmas dinner? Like I just had some fucking lamb. And it's just like the most toxic mindset I can have because there's very little I can do. Like that meal has to be the only meal that I have indulged in in the last three months um, because I've had no money. <laughs> It must have been the only meal that I've like indulged myself in and because I had you know I've been working for the last two weeks. I don't think I felt like a failure So, uh, you know, I felt like I earned it and I kept it down uh, I'm feeling way sicker today <laughs> I haven't eaten all of today um, And you, you don't have to worry about me after I shut this off I am gonna like make some fucking ramen noodles or something and eat and see if I can keep it down um, because I, I understand that this is a problem and I need to keep a handle on it. Um, but I think the biggest lesson that I've learned in terms of my body is that you're human. You're gonna, none of this is permanent. All of this is gonna fade eventually. Like some of us are born beautiful and some of us are born fucking not. <laughs> Alicia's gonna fucking kill me. She's gonna murder me because every time I say things like that, she's like, you're beautiful. Like she really tries to reinforce it. I'm sorry for anyone who was wearing headphones. Um, but you know, none of this is permanent. All of this is gonna fade. Like, look at my eyes. I feel like I've aged 50 years in this year. I have like dark circles and Zara's gonna kill me for that because she's gonna be like, you want to see dark circle? Like, I have really great friends. I don't want you, I don't want this to come off as though I have terrible friends who just abuse me all the time, but they're wonderful friends and they'll reinforce that I'm beautiful. But like, look at my eyes. I have dark circles, I have wrinkles, like none of this is permanent. And I think the biggest thing that you can take away from the body positive movement is that everybody's fucking hideous in some way. And you shouldn't put so much pressure on yourself to look perfect. Perfection isn't something that people seek anyway. I don't seek perfection. Um, you know, all the relationships that I have been in, and I've only been in two, um, I've never looked for perfection, especially not in physical perfection. Uh, I've looked more into minds and what people are interested in and how, you know, I'll tell this story another time. This is not the video for this. Oh, what I, I've told Alicia this and she started dying laughing. What I look for in a partner. But it's, it's definitely not looks. Looks is not at the top. And honestly, if somebody can't appreciate the way you look and they're in a relationship with you and they're always giving you shit about how you look, fuck that person. Like, you don't need that person in your life. Throw them in the trash where they belong. Um, I don't really know how to be motivational about this because I str struggle with my body image. I constantly struggle with my body image. And yeah, I know I'm a fucking snack. Like, look at my Instagram. I'm a fucking snack. And I don't, like, I'll throw a filter on, I'll put makeup on, but I will never, ever in my life edit a, edit a picture. Like, change my body shape, change the shape of my face. I'll throw on filters and I'll use, like, the available limited Instagram options of, like, 
highlight it like um they have like this blur feature where you can focus on one part like i do that a lot but i will never like change the shape of what i look like um it's it's never gonna happen because i hate that culture i hate that people do that and I, to an extent i understand why magazines do that but and I, not like ex extensively like i don't extensively understand it but to a degree i get it but i will never do that and i i don't know how to be motivational about this because there's times where i look in the mirror and i'll be like yes and other times where i'll be like oh you're such a fucking asshole like why even bother i felt like that yesterday I felt like that yesterday, like I just looked in the mirror and I was just like, what is wrong with you? And the answer is, is that nothing is wrong with you and everything is wrong with you. You know, we're human and we're flawed, but that's what makes us beautiful. Like I could, I will say this right here and now on record, I could never date someone who was prettier than me. I have dated people who are prettier than me, but I feel terrible because I can't get over the fact that you are prettier than me. Like, I can't do it. And if someone is perfect in the way that they look all the time, every day, that person makes me suspicious. I feel hivy about that person. I have trust issues as it is, and I don't need that in my life. Um, I feel like this just became like a body positivity run of a video. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry that you've been feeling this way. Honestly, like I, I fully get it. I feel like this from time to time where you just look in the mirror and you just want to be like, you're such a fucking asshole. Why do I look like this? But it is how you look like. And if you can't love what you look like, you can't, you know, appreciate the fact that you got some, some spots that you don't like, you know, this is the only body you get. You make the most of it. You know, you want to look like a snack, you want to get that six pack, like the, the you know, you, you want that, work for it and see if you like it. If you don't, and if you think it's too much work and you can value yourself above that, like I still really want a flat stomach. I don't think I'll ever achieve it. I think it's too late for me, <laughs> but uh, it's something that I really want. And it the workload that I would have to do to get a flat stomach is bizarre and I also feel like if I started working towards that my boobs would get smaller first and that's something that I don't want like I I really like my boobs is that bad I <laughs> I really like my boobs um so yeah I I don't know I think that if you want to work towards an image go for it see what it's like but at the end of the day none of this is permanent you know we're gonna get more wrinkles we're gonna get darker circles we're gonna get heavier in places we're gonna get looser in places you know we're gonna get wobblier and jigglier and eventually we're gonna die you know uh, it's it's just the way that life goes and i don't think that it's the most pri like the thing that we should prioritize the most in people that we seek and in ourselves you know there are other things that in my opinion i prioritize about myself i like the fact that while I consider myself an ignoramus and there's never going to be a point in my life where I'm going to think I'm an intellectual, um, I like the fact that I'm smart and I can look at things in a nuanced perspective and I have a very analytical brain and a very literature-based brain where I can just justify fucking anything. <laughs> I like that. I like that I'm nerdy and I, you know, I like weird shit and I like memes and I'm a rebellious spirit. Like, those, those are the things that I can appreciate it by myself and you know looks aren't the main thing but when I want to look like a hot fucking snack it's a struggle it's a struggle and I understand it and I'm sorry um and I'm sorry if this was not helpful at all this is just girl chat this isn't your TED talk <laughs> but um the second thing that I wanted to talk about, and it's already been 30 minutes, so I don't even know if we're going to have time to talk about it, is about freedom. And I've spoken about it um, briefly in some other videos, um, the most recent one being uh, the best things about not being part of a religion, which is, I think, the main video on my channel now, because I'm actually really happy with that video. Um, I keep saying video, video, video. Uh, and I talked about this sense of euphoria that I felt when I first left uh, my dad's house. And that was the first feeling of freedom. I, ha I was still a Muslim at that point. Uh, that was in 2015. I didn't leave Islam until 2017. And I had reported my father because he is an abusive dickhole. Um, 
and I was living in a number of different places, but I, the moment I had left my father's house and the moment I was no longer home, well, actually while I was in the homeless shelter, I felt this immense sense of freedom. I felt like Rihanna. I felt like no one could fucking touch me. Like I, I could be hit by a bus and I would die happy because I was in such a state of euphoria. It is a, dr it, it, like I got high in Amsterdam, okay? I felt higher than that when I was free. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it, is this insane sense of I made it, I did what I set out to do and I accomplished it and it, it and reality hit me very hard because I actually like before I set up this YouTube channel I actually released a video that I posted on YouTube on a different account it's no longer up because I had to delete it because of my family but I actually made a video thanking all the people who helped me get out and whether that be just verbally saying that you need to leave that house you deserve better than this like that there was a list of like 20 people um and I made a video and my family found it and I immediately re realized that my freedom was very very short-lived uh and I was again in the same mindset of oh I'm still trapped the cage I've just like walked out of one cage into a bigger cage um and since then like since being feeling like I was never truly free like the first moment I felt freedom and then I realized I wasn't truly free I'm always suspicious of feeling free if that makes sense so anytime I get this sense of freedom I, I ride the high but at the same time in the back of my mind I'm always thinking like is this going to be short-lived um so when I left Islam in 2017 I was actually really sad um I was it, it, it was a really devastating realization for me because it was a realization that I'd spent over 20 years of my life living a lie um, and I like to describe it like when people ask me what did it feel like I feel like in the matrix when Neo wakes up in that like water chamber where the machines are keeping him and using his body and he like pulls that thing out of his throat like that tube out of his throat that's what I felt like <laughs> that's what I felt like I'm gonna see if I can find that clip so I can throw it in here and hopefully it won't be copyrighted but um that's what I felt like that's it, it was a really hard realization I, I spent a year just having a full existential crisis like I didn't so I left in February 2017 and I didn't go to an ex-Muslim meetup until February or January of 2018 no it wasn't even 2018 it was this year I, I went to my first ex-Muslim meetup this year I just had, had a full existential crisis throughout all of 2017 and some of 2018 um, and it was really painful and slowly as I you know came into my own started slowly self-actualizing different parts about myself um, and there were a lot of people who helped me with that my Alicia helped me with that she's my best friend you've seen her on this channel before um, you know to other people um, my community manager Michael Stewart helped me a lot with that because I was volunteering a lot throughout uh, 2016 and 2017 um and he would talk to me and like give me really interesting things to think about and talk about and um i when i told him my story he was like how have you hidden that from me like how could you not tell me about all of that how how could you've walked in every day and me not know that you went through all of that i i told him like a year into working with him <laughs> it was like I, I don't know how to bring things like that up casually you know it's really difficult to talk about things like that um I'm getting emotional again and I really don't like it this is girl chat um but yeah it I, I've had this weird relationship with freedom I'm fucking crying what the fuck um I've had this weird relationship with freedom the first few like firsts that I had so the first time I took off my hijab super paranoid super paranoid <laughs> like it must have been at some point in 2017 or something uh, and the first time I took off my hijab was uh, it was in the middle of Wembley Park which is my favorite place in London I miss Wembley Park so much I want to move back but my family live there so I have my gripes about it but I love Wembley Park and I had, I had decided to take it off in Wembley Park and I was really suspicious I felt like everyone was looking at me I still had those notions of men are pigs and they all just want to rape us all the time so I was really like paranoid about all the men around me um 
the first day so i the first moment i had taken off my hijab in public i didn't keep it off for the whole time so i had like put it on at another point um and i actually got sexually harassed that day which made me feel like oh so i was wrong <laughs> and then i, I kind of got over it um a man had like grabbed me and tried to kiss me and i'd like violently pushed him away <laughs> uh it, it was a weird experience because it was again like the sense of freedom but also the sense of like there's still barriers there's still things that you have to fight for and like i enjoy the fight i'm very very cause driven I'm, i've always been cause driven um you know i've always had this sense of uh, I need to fight for something, but I also get really tired of fighting and this realization that I, like, I've, I've accomplished something, oh shit, I have to keep fighting, is really, really disheartening sometimes. <laughs> so it's like a sense of freedom, but also like a sense of it's not over. Um, and there's two parts of me. There's a part of me that's like, yes, you can keep fighting. There's never going to be a cause that you can't fight for. And that's something that will keep you going and keep you motivated and you can keep going. And then there's another part of like, I'm really fucking tired. Like, uh, but yeah, uh, those are my freedom experiences. I'm sorry if this wasn't like the most empowering video in the world. Uh, I just wanted to give an honest perspective of what I've been going through, like my life. Um, I hope that those of you who are looking for, you know, motivation or inspiration found some. I certainly don't feel very motivated today, if I'm being completely honest, because I'm a failure. Like, that's what I feel like. I know I'm not, but that's what I feel like today. Um, I'm going to get some food. I'm going to be, you know, things are going to be fine for me. I just need just a tiny bit of motivation and everything will be fine. Things are looking up in 2020. We've got plans in 2020. Mariam Namazi reached out to me <laughs> and wants me to speak on a panel i'm fucking dying over here like what um david wally is setting up an event and i and myself and zara k are helping him set that up and we'll be on a panel there i don't know if i'm going to be on a panel but he definitely wants zara on a panel um tweet at him harass him tell him that if he does not put me on a panel i will fucking scream at his event um but yeah things are looking up in 2020 you know i'm getting on with my studies things are going great like don't worry about me i'll be fine um for those of you who have stuck out to this length of the video thank you for watching uh for those of you even those of you who didn't and won't hear this message thank you for you know giving any ounce of attention to me you you were not obligated to be here but you were still here uh thank you for being here um you know if you liked the video consider liking consider sharing consider subscribing uh if you didn't like the video dislike the fuck out of it tell me why you didn't like it roast me in the comments roast me on twitter i'm trying to do a youtube thing it's not working i don't like it if you would like to support me in a more monetary way i have a patreon i have a paypal i have merch everything is in the link in the description in, in the links in the dis everything is linked in the description below <laughs> trying to keep it together um everything is linked in the description below if you know you would like to reach out to me you can email me you can dm me on twitter you can leave it in the comments below thank you for being here and yeah i will see you in the next video where i will be talking about my year in review uh, I don't know if I will have a video up next week because Christmas is from what I checked and I might be wrong is on a Wednesday and that's usually when I upload I may upload either Tuesday or Thursday or I might not upload at all uh, I haven't decided yet but if I don't see you next week have a lovely Christmas well I'm gonna see you tomorrow or Saturday anyway so I don't need to like vomit my heart out here but like i hope you guys are having a ho happy holiday and i hope you're spending it with your family i'm very alone <laughs> i'm very alone uh but i will be spending christmas with my best friend i will be spending it with my best friend and her family and we're gonna have a good time so again don't worry about me i'm just i'm in a weird mood today uh but i will see you in the next video um goodbye <laughs>